Brew Strong is brought to you by Blickman Engineering, home of the Riptide. Visit them online at BlickmanEngineering.com. Brew Strong is brought to you by Blickman Engineering, home of the top-tier brewing stand. Visit them online at BlickmanEngineering.com. Time for the beer radio you've been looking for. This is the show that dispels myths, tackles the toughest topics, and makes no apologies for geeking out on beer. Hosted by two guys that drink before they think, Jamil Zainashev and John Palmer. This is Brew Strong. Howdy, hey, my Bruin brothers and sisters. Greetings, greetings. And, and we've got the uh, the Tasticles in, uh, Hello, everybody. in the house here as well. Ah, hey, Tasty. Hey, John. Yeah. The uh, Tasticles, the uh, Greek god of homebrewing. I don't know if you knew that. And, indeed. Indeed. <laughs> Our testicles. <laughs> Testicles is the Greek god of pornography. <laughs> I don't know, for our fertility. One or the other. I don't know. Do you, do you know which, Eva? A fruitful internet she's, search. She's not, she used to know. But she, know. Yeah, she's not admitting to knowing. But, uh, I know yeah. nothing. No? You don't have like a uh, Greek, uh, little statue or something that you pray to for fertility? Or for Sam to grow some testicles? I pray to it no? for for infertility. Fertility. <laughs> not have any more babies. Please, no. Yeah. Okay. All right, all right. Then you, you, what you do is you bury one in the backyard. <laughs> And you, uh, and then you try and sell your house or something. I don't know. It's one of those things. Okay, okay. Oh, but only on the full moon. Full moon. <laughs> only on the full moon. Exactly. That and that's the show. <laughs> here we go. Right, we're here talking uh, Greek god, uh, Greek gods in history, <laughs> uh, the unknown Greek gods in history. <laughs> I'll do Greek gods for four hundred. Right. Uh, the Greek god of. Uh, uh, of of brewing equipment is who is John Blickman? There you go. <laughs> That's right. Very good answer in the form of a, a question. Uh, very good. Uh, yeah, uh, Blickman Engineering. Uh, they uh, are the fine sponsors of the show. They've uh, uh, taken good care of us uh, over the years, so we keep coming in and doing the show, and uh, that's why you get the show for free. All because of Blickman Engineering. They also make all sorts of. Uh, Really uh, fascinating and interesting uh, devices and equipment to uh, improve your brew day or innovate your brew day and uh, make your brewing easier and more consistent. And fun. And fun. Right, right. When you have the cool, shiny oh. gear, it is a lot more fun than oh, uh, struggling with the buckets and such. It, it, it really makes you feel a lot more like you're... Powerful. You're in control. You're, right. You're, you're a commercial you're, you're doing it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it's well worth it. And uh, you can check out all their fine gear at BlickmanEngineering.com. And you can send an email to uh, feedback at BlickmanEngineering.com if you want to uh, tell Mr. John Blickman how much you appreciate that he pays for the show so you don't have to. And he does read every one of those emails. So uh, there's your there's your access to the, to the Greek god himself of uh, uh, homebrewing equipment. Uh, speaking of which, uh, do we have uh, the Greek god of homebrewing equipment on? Did he figure out how to answer his Skype? You there, Blickman? <laughs> no, apparently he not. He had to reboot his computer. Oh, he did? Okay, well, I'll call him right back right now. Even the Greek god of, uh, of uh, brewing equipment. Mm. Gets, uh, yeah. Barry Struggles Brady. with IT. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who is the Greek god of IT? Well, no, a, hadn't been around long enough, I don't think. I think he's dead. <laughs> he's yeah. he's yeah. dead. Not, even, not defined. Not to, undefined. We're getting a 404 uh, domain unknown, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, the last two shows, we, we talked about uh, measuring um, um, temperature, temperature and, volume and, and volume and how critical they were to, to brewing and uh, some of the, the, the key tricks and and uh, how to calibrate and all this stuff, all the, the tools you could use and some of the tricks to uh, 
to improve your precision if you were uh, not, uh, you know, you know, using high-end uh, NASA-type equipment. You could still improve your, your precision. So we talked about that, and we wanted to continue with that. We wanted to talk about uh, uh, still weights. Uh, we wanted to, how, to, how to weigh properly and accurately, um, pH, uh, pressure. Dissolved yeah. oxygen, specific gravity, and I know it may sound strange, but maybe a little bit about length. <laughs> you know, length, girth, um, you know, when you're measuring uh, things like an O-ring uh, to replace your O-rings, you know, there's there's a few there's a few tricks there. So that's uh, one of the things I thought we'd uh, we would consider in the in the list of shows. And we want to be thorough. Yeah, yeah. Um, Don't want a gasket to to fail on you. Right, right. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Blickman has to uh, download and install uh, Skype again. So oh, okay. uh, you might yeah. just try him on the phone. I don't know. It doesn't really, it doesn't really sound like a what, what do you say the the god of uh, of IT. Well, he's not the god of IT. <laughs> Clearly not. He's the god of uh, brewing equipment. Oh, I see. So stick to go. kettles, Blickman. So you want me to call? Well, we can't call him, right, Beef? We can call his cell phone from Skype. Oh, I see. Okay, mm-hmm. you can give me his number, and I'll, I'll call him. Um, five, two, three. <laughs> uh, well, he's got an extension, unfortunately. Oh, well, or you can look at the the cell number is the one. Okay. He's texted me too. All right. Um. All right, so let's start off with uh, weight. Um, John, how about uh, tell us about weight? I mean, what's, what's I'm, up, I'm still around 250. <laughs> I need to drop a good 70 pounds to get back pounds. to the college weight. Yeah. There you go. So thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I wasn't meaning your weight, but, uh, uh, you know, you hear uh, people talk about, uh, like, mass, and uh, weight, and what you know? What's the difference between mass and weight? Uh, I've forgotten. Um, mass uh, that that intends to mean the the when actual call me quantity. A, when of, people call me a fat mass. Is that what they're talking about? Yeah. <laughs> no, you're thinking of a fat load. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, mass is like the quantity of material that's there. Um, irrespective, uh, irrespective of gravity, weight is intended to incorporate gravity or acceleration, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, mass mass doesn't change, weight does, mm-hmm. I think is the way, way the definitions work. So if I was weighing term- grain out, I would want to, I'd want to do it by, like a, by weight, not by mass. Like, like a bucket of grain wouldn't be a good measurement for grain. It'd be a, be the preferred measurement would be the weight of the grain, right? Weight of the grain, yes. Yeah. And the weight's going to um, change based on gravity. So if you're weighing on the moon. Or humidity. <laughs> weight is not. Uh, well, yeah, good point. Humidity does affect uh, the weight of grain considerably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But so we're, we're concerned about grain weights. Um, mass, I guess, is the more pure definition, you know, 10, 10 kilograms yeah. of Hello, weight. James. Is uh, you know mm-hmm. what we're shooting for? Okay. They're, I think the, I, I think it's safe to say they're used interchangeably in brewing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and, and do we have the uh, the Greek god of uh, brewing equipment on the line? That yeah, that <laughs> just it, fell through the roof. Intense, right? Yeah, he, told, he fell four <laughs> stories to a phone, and here he is. <laughs> there he is. There you go. Finally, had to get Skype has never been pleasant to me. Right, but I got to re- I got to reload it and it's working fine now. Oh, good. Hey, Blickman, kill your video, will you? It'll uh, help with the bandwidth. Oh, sure. Yeah, we don't need to see that stuff. <laughs> yeah, please. Oh, yeah, we've seen enough around. Hey, John. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Good. I'm trying to find the video kill button. I think it's on the bottom. There's like the hang up mic button. It's like three buttons on the bottom should be there. If not, no big deal. We, we so randomly hit one of those buttons. And there we see. go. Okay, it. perfect. If you still, yeah, just start okay. pressing buttons. <laughs> I randomly press buttons. There you go. So we were just talking about uh, mass versus weight, and uh, ah, yes, and uh, there you go. Summarize with: I think they're used interchangeably in brewing. What do you think, John? 
I think that's pretty typical. In fact, I think in, unless you're a, uh, a physicist, people don't pay attention to the difference. <laughs> there you go. Um, now, why is measuring weight accurately important in brewing? Huh? Tasty? Oh, well, uh, uh, if you're going to make the same thing twice, you got to start with the same ingredients. So right. you should measure those out. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's important. Uh, well, just, you know... Uh, yeah, it's just, just knowing what you've got, what you're starting with, uh, right? Where you're where you're trying to be. And, uh, yeah, uh, you know, even things like uh, you may think, oh, well, it's not that important. Maybe in grain, uh, you know, uh, ten pounds or ten pounds one ounce or ten pounds uh, two ounces, not a big deal. Uh, you know, in bottling sugar, small difference. Uh, it can make a huge difference in the uh, the carbonation level of of your of your batch of bottles, right? That's right. So there's there's uh, there's times when you need a lot more precision, uh, and there's times when uh, you need uh, you know just general accuracy and repeatability more than true uh, accuracy in, in weighing out the grain. As long as you're weighing the grain. The same way each time, and you're getting you know a a known a known amount that you can consistently repeat, then you're probably fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I imagine uh, you know it'd be possible to take a plastic bucket and consider you know a filled plastic bucket as your measure. <laughs> Right, you could calibrate and, to that, sure. right? And you could you could uh, yeah. make up uh, that would always be your amount of grist, and you could use uh, a portion of uh, black malt, a portion of crystal, and just at the end, it got filled to the top with base grain, and there you go. You can do your, it the same way every time. It's right. as good as gold. You can just say yeah. a, a bucket and a half of base and a half a bucket of uh, right. black patent, and away you go. There you are. You've you've got a consistent measure. So you know, through all these shows. Uh, yeah, you know, we're talking about consistency and improving your brewing because you're able to repeat what you're doing. Um, anything and else? You know, to, uh, to, uh, yeah. For 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 home brewers, though, you know those specialty malts can make particularly like the yeah. the really dark malts can make a big difference. And you know the the base mm-hmm. malt you can be off a little bit, and your your you know it'll come out in the in the wash at the end in the noise. Mm-hmm. Um, but those specialty malts. You do want to measure those pretty accurately, like black patent, yeah. um, right? Anything and that, with intense mm-hmm. color. Yeah, five percent difference flavor. makes a huge, huge difference. So, yeah, I've noticed in like with dark, dark malts especially, uh, that, mm-hmm. that's not necessarily a linear relationship. It wouldn't be twice as dark if I used twice as much. It's not necessarily linear. There's an mm-hmm. interaction mm-hmm. within itself. Just, Right, because there's a certain amount of darkness you get just from the uh, the base grains, mm-hmm. and then uh, you know you get that initial darkness, and then to get and a more intense darkness takes takes uh, considerably more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and a consistent process of course to match that. All right, let's do this. Let's take a short break. Uh, when we come back, we'll continue talking about uh, weights and uh, how you may get precise measures right after this. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda, you never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. The 21st Amendment. Watch out! Do you like beer? They make beer. Watch out! Do you like friends and fun? They make friends and fun. Watch out! Do you still like to have a good time? The 21st Amendment. Watch out! The 21st Amendment in San Francisco, located at 563 2nd Street, two blocks from the building where baseball is seen and played. Try their beers in the pub or try them in the can. Featuring... Monk's Blood. Made with real monk. Watch out! So why not have the best time of your life? Go to the 21A and Sean O'Sullivan will personally greet you with a can of... Monk's Blood. The 21st of them. Watch out! This advertisement is not in any way affiliated nor associated with the 21st Amendment Bar and Pub, nor its subsidiaries or affiliates. This telecast is not copywritten by the 21st Amendment for the private use of the Brewing Network. Any use of this telecast without Jamil Zanishev's consent is prohibited. Suck it, JP. Do you 
know the three most important rules in brewing? Sanitation, sanitation, and sanitation. And no one does it better than Five Star Chemicals. Five Star knows sanitation. You can only sanitize clean equipment. And Five Star knows how to clean, too. For craft brewers and home brewers, Five Star has what you need to keep your fermenters, serving tanks, kegs and draft lines sparkling and free of any beer-spoiling bacteria. PBW, caustic, acid cleaners, star sand, Santa Clean, lubricants and defoamers, pH stabilizers, and more. Five Star Chemicals has cleaning supplies, safety supplies, heat exchangers, pumps, hoses, and valves. And Five Star is proud to offer eco-friendly products that exceed customer expectations. If you have a cleaning problem, you need the Five Star Solution. Visit FiveStarChemicals.com or call 800-782-7019. 800-782-7019. And get the Five Star our treatment today. Back to the beer guys that make other beer guys look like wine guys. Brew strong. All right, we're back. And uh, I want to tell you about <coughs> White Labs. You want to get more in-depth knowledge of yeast? If so, Wine Lab's March 13th and 14th uh, uh, Yeast Essentials Class 2.0 in San Diego, California. This two-day workshop will explore fermentation control points, tips for maintaining optimal yeast performance, and how to develop desired yeast flavor compounds. Attendees will learn methods for off-flavor detection and sensory evaluation techniques of different strains, as well as how to properly troubleshoot different fermentation problems. Can't make it to San Diego? No problem. They're also offering a live webcast. Register by February 14th to take advantage of early bird pricing. Learn more about the event by visiting whitelabs.com slash education. All right. Yeah. Uh, you know, fermentation, most important part of uh, brewing. So Absolutely. Here's your chance to uh, get pro-level knowledge uh, from the White Labs folks. All right, we're talking about uh, measuring weight and how important that is to brewing. Um uh, Blickman, what what uh, what are some of the devices that uh, you can use to measure weight? Well, I I started with one of those really old school, you know, spring type dial scales, mm-hmm. and um, you know they, those things work great for the uh, the smaller quantities, um, you know, ounces and and you know down to maybe half ounce. Mm-hmm. Um, but you get into a little bit of a problem when you're trying to measure grain and you don't want to measure it out like one pound at a time. Um, So now, you know, they have uh, just a really nice uh, scales that, um, you know, you can go up to 50 pounds with them and, and, you know, one hundredth of a pound uh, kind of precision. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, uh, you know, for the smaller stuff, you know, things down to a tenth of a gram. Mm -hmm. And and they're pretty reasonably priced these days. And I I actually use um, uh, two different scales. I use a a small... um, uh, precision scale uh, that goes up weed. to yeah. about a kilogram or two, maybe about a, about a kilogram. Oh, kilogram that's a lot of weed. Uh, is that a lid? And then, what's that? <laughs> is it a lid? A kilogram is a lid. I'm not sure. Sorry, <laughs> but uh, so that one I use for measuring water salts. I use it for measuring hops. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and and then the uh, most of the specialty grains because I want to get those a little bit more accurate and. Uh, uh, you know anything you know a couple pounds or less mm-hmm. and then uh, i've i 've got a larger scale um, with a remote um, display on it that 's kind of nice so I set my bucket on there, tear it out, and then um, you know so it reads zero and I can get the full you know five or ten gallon batch uh, quite easily uh, into uh, one bucket and and just you know measure that uh, base malt um, very accurately mm-hmm. Right, and so I also use that. I use that same scale to uh, check volumes mm-hmm. on, like, uh, uh, you know, fermenting buckets and and different things like that. Right. So all those are load cell based. So there's mm-hmm. a uh, whole piece in there that, uh, like, when we're talking about measuring temperature or whatever, all these work off of electrical um, resistance um, through through. Uh, 
through wires. So in the load cell, the flexing of the, the cell causes the, the uh, reading to change. And they can be from the real lightest to some of the real heaviest they weigh, uh, you know, oh, yeah. train cars on uh, load cells. Um, the uh, big uh, silos full of malt in breweries a lot of times are, are weighed by load cells. Uh, and like you're saying, uh, they can be had fairly cheaply off of something like eBay. Um, but what about, uh, you, know, you talked about the spring scale. Those are the uh, tasty. When you started, you probably started with a little spring scale. And yes, I believe I did, yes. A little uh, like weigh the baby kind of scale. Right. Like, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Seven pounds or less kind of thing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it bounced around quite a bit, but I trusted it. Uh, right, right. Probably was the least of my problems is whether I was uh, mm-hmm. half pound off or not. Yeah, but, something like that for measuring grain. Yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely fine. When you're trying to do the uh, the finer measurements, like we talked to talked about the uh, you know the um, you know bottling sugar or something like that, that can be a problem. Yeah. Um, you know more. Uh, uh, old time lab base was uh, balances. Um, Palmer, I'm sure you used a balance in, in some of your your classes and probably afterwards. Yeah. Oh yeah, and uh, I I even had one myself for a short time. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's very useful for you know micrograms and, and hundreds of grams. Mm-hmm. But uh, you don't need to be that accurate with your hops. Right. So I uh, I just use a typical gram scale, the load cell type. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, those, I mean, you know, it really is nice how pro- technology has pro- progressed. I mean, I remember, Jamil, when, when, the, you know, when we were first doing Brew Strong, we would talk about uh, postal scales and, um, you mm-hmm. know, cocaine scales and so on, trying right. to get some accuracy. Uh, and now if you have a scale you know, good enough for measuring cocaine, it's probably good enough yeah. for measuring hops. Yeah. <laughs> I remember saying but, that. Now they're readily available, so you know, <laughs> pretty sweet. It's been immortalized. It still plays in the session <laughs> opening. <laughs> uh, back in the good old days. Um, well, and there's the uh, you know the balance uh, uh, lab balance. You know you'll you'll see them uh, enclosed on all sides in glass, and uh, that's in, in order for you know stray breezes not to affect the uh, affect the measurement. I mean, you can open up one of the sides, you can blow on it, and you'll see that the weight change. It's that sensitive. So they they tend to be you know highly accurate, um, quite expensive, and uh, but but very useful when you want to measure out something with uh, uh, very high precision, small amounts with high precision. Um, when we're doing something like a zinc addition, uh, you know it's four grams for a thirty barrel batch. So uh, you know as a home brewer, you you could invest in one of these balances maybe you can find one at a uh, lab auction or something like that but uh an easier way is to just and i think we measured uh, mentioned this before an easier way is to uh measure a larger volume a larger amount instead of uh you know you could you could weigh out uh, 10 grams which you can do on a on a smaller scale dissolve it in a liter of water and then if you want uh you know a, a gram you do uh, you know 100 mils or if you want a, a fraction of that then you can measure fractions of grams uh that works on things that will dissolve in, in water but if you're trying to measure something like uh oh i guess hop extracts you could maybe uh dissolve that in in alcohol uh maybe um you know, but there might be other things that you get. Can't but your dissolve. your common minerals that you use in brewing, a lot of times those are right, right. Yeah. yeah, good point. I think almost anything that you're going to use in brewing, and yeah, that's another good good example. Tasty, uh, you know the the mineral amounts are often uh, very small. Yeah, and um, you know if you want to have precision in that, you know, the more precise you can be on your water, the better. Um, uh, you know, it's not absolutely critical what it is but once you've settled on a water it's critical to repeat that every time so your your does that make sense your initial measure is not that critical but you just need to be able to repeat that measure every time in terms of, of making making the same beer over and over again now if right. you want to pass that recipe on to somebody else or go take your equipment and go brew someplace else the, the accuracy of your equipment is going to be 
be right, have right. more of an effect. And then there's those old timey uh, balances, uh, you know, like the uh, the three little sliding weights on the bars. Yep. You know, um, I still have one of those or two of those. Quite handy, quite accurate, and um, you can get them pretty cheap now. I think. Hmm. Either you guys uh, uh, use those still or have one of those in your garage. No, I don't. I mean, use, yeah, I don't use them any longer. Uh, but you know, the nice thing about those is you really, they really never go out of calibration or anything else. You probably find them on mm-hmm. eBay for for pretty inexpensively. Yeah, right, and looks, you can calibrate them. They have a uh, a little uh, nut and screw on uh, on the far end, and what you do is just slide your weights to to the zero mark, and then turn the dial until it reads zero exactly, or until it's balanced exactly, and that's it. It's calibrated. Mm-hmm. It's done. And uh, so they're, they're real durable and uh, real nice for weighing out, uh, uh, you know, these, these materials. Also, I'd add, if you're weighing on a balance or on a, you know, one of these uh, lab balance or a th- three bar, triple bar balance or whatever they call them, um, or anything else, uh, weigh boats are kind of nice. Especially for the smaller, um, oh yeah, for hops and stuff. Hops and, and for they, they and they, minerals. You yeah. buy them off of Amazon, eBay. Just uh, there's like a little. They have plastic ones. They have paper ones. Uh, they're just little dishes that uh, don't weigh much, and they come in different sizes and they're real handy. That you don't well, get if you go to Smart and Final, you can find equivalent things for you know um, hors d'oeuvres or salsa containers and stuff. There you go. I mean, I get lots of stuff from Smart and Final that right. way. I mean. Um, all right, so uh, uh, a balance would be used for uh, weighing out uh, minerals, um, weighing out, uh, you know, maybe um, uh, yeast additives, um, uh, bottling sugars, priming sugars, uh, things like that, yeah. Uh, and hops, up to hops. Yeah. Okay. Spring scale. Um, there, your accuracy is a little less uh, given because it's it's attention to the spring and that thing that, you know, it's not going to be accurate all the way across its range. It's going to be less accurate as it gets to one end or the other um, versus, um, you know, a lot of times it depends on the marks and how well they were put on the thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um just kind of like, uh, you know, uh, when we're talking about volumes of uh, graduated cylinders and such. Um, and then, uh, let's see, calibration on those. A lot of times they have a calibrating nut as well, which changes the tension on the spring. And uh, so that's pretty good for weighing out, uh, you know, grains in, in certain amounts. Um, in the smaller amounts, um you know, again, I think uh, you know there's there's more precise things, but you can get spring scales really cheap. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, sometimes you get it for a buck or two, um, so uh, that's a possibility. Uh, one thing we didn't talk about is pneumatic or hydraulic uh, weighing. No, anybody um. Bueller? <laughs> I just equate that to load cell, except it's. Uh... Right. So uh, what they do is um, essentially uh, you have a fine pressure gauge. We'll talk about pressures later. Um, And then the amount of weight, um, there's like a bar that, you know, presses on or pulls on and the weight causes the pressure to change. And the change in pressure is translated to a certain amount of weight. Um, So it tends to be used for... Uh, massively heavy things, I think. Um, uh, sometimes things with uh, certain precision. I know one of the ways that you calibrate uh, your pressure gauges is by a known weight, and uh, that it can be. That's kind of an old timey way of calibrating pressure gauges. I guess it's still used to this day. So no, nobody using pneumatic or hydraulic uh, weighing? No. Nope. Not, not in your home brewing? I skipped all that, I guess. I I, I tell you, <laughs> you and I both know that somewhere out there, there is a, a home brewer using, like, hydraulic weighing of their grain, <laughs> sure. you know, with with some robot, uh, you know, uh, transferring the grain a piece at a time, something, something ridiculously cool. 
All right. And then uh, load cells. We're talking about load cells. Um, accuracy. Um, so much of it depends on how well the piece was made. And, you know, that, you know, the more precise the, the, the machining, the more consistent the material that the cell is located in, um, the, you know, construction of the cell and your wiring from the load cell to your indicator is critical. So, um, too much resistance, uh, kinked wires, bad connections, corroded connections, all these will affect the accuracy of your, your load cells. So it's, it's not just one thing. It's the whole package. Now, when you buy one of these little scales, it's all built in there. And there's really nothing for you to do but you know, keep it clean and dry. Um, when you have... Um, uh, for example, at Heretic, we have a, a grist case on load cells. And the load cells um, I bought off of eBay, and then they go to a summing box. So you you, you weigh – ideally, you want to weigh uh, when you're for, – for commercial brewery, if you're setting up a grist case or something like that, you want to set it up on three legs. You don't want four legs. You want three. The reason being three balances itself out. Um, four can become unbalanced. Uh, so three is actually more accurate than four, four load cells. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you do four load cells, um, the the trick is to uh, put a level across all the directions, and level from side to side, you know, back to front, and make sure that the whole thing is perfectly level. You back off of all your load cells, all the pressure on them, and then you you get that, and then you you start adjusting your load cell feet. Until the whole thing's perfectly level, and then once it's perfectly level, um, your your weights should be fairly accurate because you want the same weight pressing on every every foot, every load cell foot. So, in order to read four load cells, you send those four signals to what's called a summing box, and then that summing box, you send the signal out of there to a uh, indicator. An indicator is something that will display the the. It'll send a signal to the load cells, and it'll read back the resistance it's getting, or the voltage it's getting. I'm not sure which, and then um, from that, it'll convert it into a weight. So, depending on the indicator, um, it can do different things. It can, um, you know, adjust the. Uh, uh, accuracy, you can have an offset in there, or um, you know, uh, you can have indicators that read each each foot in, independently, and then uh, sum it for you there at the indicator. Um, but that's pretty much in a nutshell what you need is, um, and it's it's fairly simple. So you can you look on eBay for used indicators, you get brand new load cells. Uh, load cells come in ranges um, from very tiny weights. To very large weights, and you want to get one that is the weight range that you're going to use. So, if you're weighing a, a grist case, um, you know maybe you want zero to two thousand pounds, or however much grist you're doing. If you're doing five hundred pounds, get one that goes like six hundred. Um, the smaller the range, the more accurate you're, it's going to get. The larger the range, the less accuracy you're going to get. Um, and what else? Uh, you guys got anything else to add for uh, load cells? You do bring up a good point about the indicator, and mm-hmm. it's important to get a quality indicator that's got the resolution to match your uh, transducers, your load cells. Right. You can buy a you can buy phenomenal uh, load cells and put it on a crappy indicator, mm-hmm. and it's going to read all over the place. Right, um, because it's working very fine. Uh, uh, increments of of electricity and um, uh, you know the more precise uh, the better and um, uh, well here's a question yeah do you want to get a combination you know load cell indicator or whatever that you're reading generally in the middle you know across the middle of the range say zero to two thousand you're reading mainly five hundred to fifteen hundred or do you want something that you know, covers your entire range, um, say zero to a thousand, you know, and you're measuring across that range, both, you know, at 10 and 900, 
pounds typically? Um, I, I think, you know, with most of these things, the accuracy is fairly consistent across, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was less accurate, a very low, like, you know, in the zero to 10 and in the, you know, 900 to 1,000 than it was in the, the middle of the range. Um, they have specs on all these load cells with graphs showing, you know, any any error uh, that you might see. And I think there's there's kind of a, a curve to it, you know, kind of like a bell curve. Um, okay. But, yeah, I would try. Let's say you your max grist was, you know, a thousand pounds, but you know, hey, sometimes maybe you know you could, uh, if you're going to do uh, you know a big beer once a year, well, you could weigh it twice. You could weigh you know 750, 750, you know, and if your average grist was always 750, and you want to do a 1500, you just do two two batches of grist. Um, I mean, same thing on sizing a grist case. I wouldn't make a grist case so big that you know it was half full most of the time. Um, Instead of you know, so I would think about doing that versus getting one that's zero to two thousand. Um, yeah, I think you'll have more precision, and you know you're going to be off a pound, you know here or there, but eh, not a big deal when you're talking about seven hundred fifty pounds. Depends what percent of the total it is. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, these indicators. Um, you know, we I bought one off of eBay. I think I spent two hundred fifty bucks. I had to write the. Uh, the numbers on the keypad myself because they were all worn out <laughs> on this used indicator, a GSE indicator. But, you know, we were able to uh, set it up uh, to run a bunch of relays and with programming so that um, you just punch in a number of pounds you want, and hit start, and then it, it weighs out, you know, it mills uh, that amount of grain for you. So, I mean, all that's fairly easy to do uh, with load cells and indicators and I know the uh, the companies that provide this for you. They want like forty grand or something crazy, but uh, you can do it yourself. And I think uh, that's one area where brewers might look at saving some money by doing it themselves. It's pretty simple. All right, uh, let's take another break. When we come back, we'll be uh, wrapping up our, our talk about weight, and we uh, will move on to our next topic, which is going to be pH pressure. I don't know. It starts with a P. We'll be back right after this. Are you looking for a simple brewing system that's great for all grain brewing, but everything on the market seems to be full of compromises? Blickman Engineering has the answer. The Blickman Brew Easy All Grain Brewing System. The Brew Easy is a complete system with easy upgrades and a beautiful compact design, perfect for any size brewing location. At its core, the Brew Easy is built on two gorgeous Blickman Boilermaker brew kettles, a high temperature March pump, and either a top tier gas burner or the new boil coil electric heater. The Brew Easy adapter lid allows the pots to stack on top of each other, forming an efficient, strong, and compact brewing setup that comes in 5, 10, and 20-gallon batch sizes. Upgrade your BrewEasy system with full automated control by adding a Blickman Tower of Power temp controller and make moving around easy with the Blickman Kettle Cart. The BrewEasy is modular. If you already own a Boilermaker kettle, you can build your BrewEasy by purchasing just the modules you need. The new BrewEasy all-grain brewing system. See it today at BlickmanEngineering.com and brew with Blickman quality on your new BrewEasy. Are you a member of the White Labs Customer Club? If not, you should be. It's the easiest way to earn free stuff for turning in your old homebrew labels from either vials or pure pitch. All you have to do is save your labels and redeem them for things like free yeast, an exclusive White Labs t-shirt or sweatshirt, and even the opportunity to brew with the yeast man himself, Chris White. Signing up is easy. Just go to whitelabs.com slash customer club, fill out the registration form, and then mail in your labels. They will return the favor by sending you awesome White Labs swag. Go sign up today at whitelabs.com slash customer club. White Labs, pure yeast and fermentation since 1995. Since 1979, Williams Brewing has offered the finest equipment and freshest ingredients and the best customer service in the business. Check out their brand new patent-pending mash and boil 110-volt electric mashing and boiling unit. This compact all-stainless unit lets you mash, sparge, and boil just about anywhere that has a 110-volt plug. Double wall construction adds to efficiency and safety, and a precise thermostat keeps temperatures where you want them. Unlike
like insulated buckets and converted coolers, multiple temperature rest mashing is easy to do. All for under 300 bucks. They also feature the Mark II Work Pump, a magnetic drive high temperature pump that does the work of pumps that cost twice as much, as well as exclusive Brewer's Edge regulators and quality Keg King kegs and disconnects. Check them out today at williamsbrewing.com to bruise their vast selection. Back to the two guys that know how to turn beer into beer. This is Brew Strong. All right, we're back. I want to tell you about Grog Tang. They are your one-stop homebrew customization shop. They have it all. From reusable beer and wine labels to durable metal signs to high-quality coasters, and everything is customizable. So get creative over on grogtag.com with one of our hundreds of templates, and we'll print it on high-quality materials and ship it out to you. It's easy. Check out grogtag.com today and use the code BNARMY to save 10% on your next order. That's grogtag.com. And I'll tell you, you know, you put a lot of effort into, uh, you know, making making the beer and making it perfectly. Uh, you know, don't put a crappy disgusting uh, piece of paper on there stuck on with milk yeah. you know you may <laughs> Which, yeah you, you're not impressing anybody at all with that. well and then they think yeah. they think less of your of your beer yeah yeah it makes right. a difference yeah. um you know to, to display it nicely and people will be like oh you aren't just some hack you are very serious about this doesn't cost much and and it well, makes a difference yeah and good label system like that you know yeah. they're reusable and so you know right one of the options they have Makes it easy to do, and it just looks so much better, and you don't lose track of what you've got. Yeah, plus they have some templates to get you started yeah. to fill out that you know, um, you know, maybe maybe other people that use Grog Tag would know that you use those templates, but you know, your neighborhood isn't going to know. They're going to be like, "Wow, yeah. look at this! Look at Bob's Real brew. Bob's Brewing." Yeah. All right, uh, we're talking uh, weights. Any, let's let's wrap up with some recommendations here. Mm-hmm. Well, oh, no. I recommend the anvil uh, scales. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the the anvil line has some scales in there that uh, you guys have uh, checked to make sure uh, they're of the accuracy and the 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 value of the the scales, right? Yeah, they absolutely. Are very, yeah, very accurate. There you go. Um, and what what I, I would recommend people get a uh, one uh, low range uh, uh, device, electronic scale mm-hmm. um, uh, that'll do from uh, you know uh, tenths of grams up to uh, you know a few grams at least, or I mean a few ounces, uh, maybe maybe a pound, you know half a kilo. And uh, that'll cover most of your your hop needs and your your minerals and things like that. Um, if you want, you know, I'd get one of those um, real low uh, low weight, low range ones, and keep it separate just for all your minerals and stuff. And then get a, another one. You know, since you all have tons of money to spend, I'd get another one that's a little higher range. That's in the does you know. Uh, from maybe a quarter ounce up to a couple pounds and use that one for your hops. And then I'd get one that's, uh, you know, your hops and your specialty grains. And then I'd get one that does, uh, you know, in pounds up to Set a bucket on it. 25, 50 pounds for weighing mm. water, weighing, uh, uh, you know, grains, things like that. Mm-hmm. That's one of the, the things about weight. Uh, we talked about in measuring volumes, uh, you can use weight to, to, say how much water you have and it's very accurate um so if you get a scale that'll handle the weight you know if you're doing uh 10 gallons of water that's 80 pounds Mm -hmm. um but you know if you want to weigh out a a five gallon bucket well you're talking about 40 pounds so if you have a 50 pound scale uh range then you know you're pretty good there um so i think that those are kind of the three scales that you need in a a home brewery yeah you can blend a couple together but you're going to be better off Kind of addressing right. each scale, sort of business. Well, because you put a heavy weight on a on a more delicate scale, um, sometimes you can uh, you know bend things like uh, like the load cells a little bit past their right. yeah. past their uh, it tolerance. Mm-hmm. Violate its linear na- nature. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the price the prices have come down so much on those uh, digital scales, and the uh, the ranges you know are really you know th- that that small range unit. 
uh, that measures to a tenth of a gram up to a, you know a pound or two is is perfect for uh, water salts and um, hops. It's amazing how linear they are these days. Mm-hmm. And then the larger one for measuring the grain, you've pretty well got it covered. Um, and they are, you know, I think the the smaller scales are in the twenty dollar range, and the bigger ones are in the you know, $60 range, something like that. And, uh, you know, it's something you'll have for a long time and, and they're just nice and repeatable and easy to use. And Right. Even the battery operated ones these days, they, they'll oh, yeah. run for many years without replacing the batteries. You don't even need the, uh, you know, the power cord thing anymore a lot of times. That's right. Yeah, uh, I've, I've got several scales um, from work over the years that, um, you know, everything from counting scales that, you know, do hundreds of a gram um, on up to heavier stuff, 50, 50 to 100 pounds. And uh, as you say, they've become kind of obsolete compared to the battery ones. Uh, they, they work just as well mm-hmm. and much cheaper. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, and that's one of the things. Uh, consistent voltage is important to uh, being able to measure accurately as well. Because um, it is based on uh, having enough voltage, and they they step it down, and and if if your supply voltage drops too much, um, your voltage coming back out is is not accurate. So that is one important thing. Um, the scales all have like calibration loops, so that that's why your scale right. always tells you when it needs a new battery. You don't need it. you don't have to, sure sure it, it'll tell you. All right. Um, anything else to add about weighing before we move on? Nope. Okay. I'll take that as a, as a no. Um, pH. pH is another quite important thing that I think a lot of brewers skip because, I don't know, they, they, they find it too complex or, or Harder to mystical. Measure. Yeah. I mean, you know, and even understanding the scale, tasty, uh, you know, what am I looking at? I think a lot of people know seven, but do they realize what kind of factor they're dealing with? Most don't. And and I get most people don't even address pH. I mean, they may from a uh, a macro standpoint, they find out what the pH of their strike water is. And then, you know, the rest of it's, uh, you know, pretty much based on like standard practices of like if you use a certain amount of of grist, you're going to, you know, have a corresponding adjustment in pH. But a lot of people, or I'd say most people, don't get into measuring pH, at least on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. I remember when I first started getting into pH, I would, I would measure it at, at every step. And then I, after a while, I realized, like, oh, okay, this is the same way every time. If I, you know, generally use this sort of grist and I use this same water all the time, I'm going to usually get the same, pretty much the same result. Mm-hmm. And every, uh, every, uh, Every time I, I use that water in, in, in that certain way. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when I first started uh, measuring pH, it was either you had solutions that you had to do drop by drop and then match up a color, or um, it was, you know, lab type equipment with, uh, you know, a series bench uh, thing. And then when the first handhelds came out, they were garbage. I mean, they oh, yeah. really did not measure accurately. And they would only last for a few months before they just completely died. So I know those have improved, but that really put me off of the handhelds. Um, yeah, these days the handhelds are quite good. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, it, I mean, and I guess that's the nice thing about the March technology in the last 10 years is that, uh, you know, all these tools, you know, scales, pH meters, um, and water testing in general has really moved forward. So it's uh, much more user-friendly, you know, auto calibration. We just dip it in the solution, punch a button, and mm-hmm. calibrates itself. Um, yeah. Well, and uh, I think, you know, one of the things about, uh, you know, the uh, accuracy of various uh, pH reading uh, uh, techniques, the... Um, you know, when you're talking about these handheld and, you know, desktop and, and or benchtop uh, meters, one of the things people don't realize about electronics is the quality of the components that went into the electronics 
affect the overall accuracy and reliability and performance of that that item. So, um, the precision of the resistors used, the precision of the capacitors used, I mean, you know, the uh, how all the traces were laid out on the board, the quality of the material used in, uh, you know, uh, etching these traces, all that stuff will affect uh, the overall precision of the device. And, you know, it's one of the reasons that some of these things cost more than others. I mean, uh, I would think the, the same thing on Blickman products, right? That's it's right. Quality, quality that goes is remembered. In. Right. <laughs> Long after the... Long after the price is forgotten. <laughs> the price is forgotten, yes. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, components have become a lot more reliable. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's um, become less expensive to make yeah. higher precision components. Mm -hmm. And that's really helped over the years. Yeah. yeah, and prices really have dropped significantly on those. It used to be, you know, you'd have to spend a good four hundred dollars to get a decent pH meter, mm -hmm. and now you can get them for what hundred bucks for a, yeah. for a decent one. I mean, they still have some, you know, thirty dollar cheap ones, um, right. but you know, then again, you know, it's you know, a cheap tool is just frustrating to use, and if you're trying to measure something, you know, having a rubber ruler isn't extremely helpful. <laughs> Well, it depends on what you want to use the ruler for. Sometimes things have a curve to them, and you need a rubber ruler. I'm just saying. Um, let's 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 go through these uh, kind of step by step. Uh, measuring pH with liquids. So uh, you've seen these, uh, you know, kind of titrate uh, kits where, like a pool, you're checking your chlorine in your pool or something like that. Um, they have these for pH. They do? Sure. Sure. Okay. They have for pH. So you're, uh, talking, you're just talking about the little handheld guys. Liquid, the liquid test ORP kits. ORP electrodes. Oh, these no, are no, uh, titrate. titrate. Where you, you, oh, you, drip, the, you, yes. you okay. drip the solution in and tells you what the pH is, right? Basically, they're built around the fact that you start out with a, 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 a no, water of a certain right. color. Mm -hmm. And once it goes well, it changes from that color, color to, to clear, right. Right. that's a number. And right. you, you may have to... Do that, you know, two or three times, you know, based on different mm -hmm. uh, standard solutions, mm -hmm. give you a number. Well, I'll say this, uh, you know, something like that uh, can be accurate when the solutions are fresh and when what you are measuring the pH of is, is clear, like water. Uh, once you get into something like wort, uh, that's where you start to, to struggle, especially like a darker wort. You're doing a stout. You want to check your mash pH. becomes very difficult. So that's kind of the limitations of liquids. Also, the liquids, uh, you know, the uh, reagents you use, they um, start to um, uh, degrade over time. You know, you have to throw them out probably every year or two. Um, so... While they may be cheap to start with, it's not necessarily the best way to go. But uh, you know, it's it's something that can be can be used. Um, the test strips. Now, uh, some of you guys hate the test strips. Um, I had great luck with the uh, the German um, oh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. test strips, um, and I, I matched it up against uh, my bench meter, and I I, I could tell. You know, I could read even between the colors mm. what the pH was. It's not quite this color. It's not quite that color. Okay, so instead of five two or five four, it's five three. Sure enough, the bench would say five three. Mm. Mm. So, um, yeah, you know, if you're dealing in tenths, I I wasn't going to be able to say five point three five, but I could <laughs> I could nail five three or whatever. Now, that seems accurate enough for most beer situations. Absolutely, yeah. and and again, better for water than it is for for dark liquids. But even still, the color would come through. Um, That's where I really got would get tripped up. Some was when you're doing the darker beers. Mm -hmm. uh, then it's like, well, what's influencing what? as far as the color goes. Right. Yeah, that's my principal concern with the test strips is, you know, you you do have to make dis, um, decisions on exactly what that color is and, you know, interpretations, right. I guess. Well, and some people have better ability to view um, colors and discern colors. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's actually a, a, a gene that allows uh, people to – and women tend to have it more than men, or, or only women have it, I think. It has to do with um, 
like when the uh, you know the XY chromosome, you know the the Y is 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 an X that lost one of its legs essentially. That's and the gene that allows for this color detecting is in that lost leg, I think. And so men don't tend to have it, but um, uh, I've seen uh, examples of uh, you know they'll, they'll show you like forty reds, right? And you're just like. Um, those all look the same to me, <laughs> and there'll there'll be a person that they can look at them, and then they can put them in order of intensity of color, and it's super easy for them, and they all look identical to you, but to this person who has that uh, extra gene in there, they they can t- t- a- accurately discern all these different colors that's why women tend to be much better they say oh it's a survival thing for colors of berries or something stupid like that but um they don't they don't really think that anymore i think Uh, it's uh, it's just so they can give us a hard time that's why we're more coordinated than you are (laughs) it's like color coordinated that's not white that's why they're different that's ivory that's uh that's snow that's uh you know there's like the thousand versions of white it's like like eskimos and snow it's uh like women and, and decorating colors I love it, <laughs> but it's it's a fact. Um, so, on that sidebar, uh, that's why <laughs> maybe the strips are not for everybody, or the liquids when you're having to uh, tell these colors. But cheap, quick, effective. Um, you don't have to calibrate the strips. Um, you know, the German ones you can cut them in half, and, and you get twice as much for your money. Yeah. And um, you know, if you want to check your water real quick. Uh, I I encourage people to at least give it a try versus not checking their pH at all. Yeah, I think most people check their water pH. Of course, that wouldn't have any much bearing on on, on the you know the dark beer, uh, not dark beer situation. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. That, that's the I think that's the measurement most home brewers take the most is what's the pH of my water today when, when I start, mm-hmm. and then yeah. from there from there if you can just you know get that one number, I think the rest of the brewing uh, can kind of take care of itself. Well, I'm firmly of the opinion that water pH doesn't matter. Oh, that's right. <laughs> but aside from that, you, you, you may just be able there's to use a whole that as a determination of, of whether it changed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, I mean, mash pH, you know, certainly more more important than uh, what you start well, with. Yeah. Um, but what you start with will affect. No, that's the beginning. Yeah. Affect everything. No, if you have high, high alkaline water, you're going to going to affect uh, right. mash pH for sure. Right. Um, so definitely related. All right, so then you can go to the uh, the, the handheld meters. Uh, there's the ones that are all built in one little stick, um, where the the uh, uh, element, the probe, is is uh, built into the end. And I find those pretty horrible. At least, I mean, maybe there's better ones. I haven't tried them recently, but they tend to. Uh, one problem is. The uh, the the element the uh, the sensor shall we say um, electrode the electrode thank you the the pH electrode um, those need replacing over time and if uh, if your electrode needs replacing you have to throw away the whole the whole unit some are replaceable mm-hmm. you know if you get the higher end ones there uh, the electrodes are replaceable on those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm little... trying to remember the ones that come with the uh, Lamont kits if they have a replaceable electrode or not. Yeah, the Brew Lab ones. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. And I've I've used an X Tech for years, and um, they're replaceable as well. But if you get the the cheaper ones, they're not. You mm-hmm. know, so they're not necessarily cheaper. You know, because you've got to replace the whole thing then. Right. Whereas uh, if you get a handheld with a uh, an electrode on on a cord. Right. Um, you can replace like that. Milwaukee's and stuff. Right, yeah. right. And those tend to run about 100, 150, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And then, you know, you're you're insured that uh, you can replace your electrode and not have to replace the meter. And replacement electrodes tend to run, oh, from 35 to 70, depending on the electrode. There's different types of electrodes for different uh, solutions. Because uh, a lot of these handheld ones um, with non-replaceable electrodes, they come with something that's just generic for water. 
um, not really designed to, to handle the high protein environment of wort. Uh, some of them are, are you know more temperature sensitive than others. Um, they have a durability yeah. to them. Uh, some will last a long time. Uh, some you know crap out pretty quick. Um, so yeah, there are some know. wine and beer ones that are a more longer life because mm-hmm. they're, they're able to stand up the environment better. Right. Um, and that brings you to like a bench meter. Uh, one of the reasons I think a bench meter tends to, the bench meters tend to be more accurate is because there's more room to lay everything out. You don't have all your electronics crammed in a little box. Yeah, electronics have improved, but, um, you know, noise issues, things like that, um, that, that can be real handy. And another nice thing about bench, bench top is, you can get one of those. Uh, well, I guess you could use a, a, an electrode stand, uh, uh, even with a handheld, if the cord was long enough. Um, but uh, I think they, you know, they tend to uh, uh, be a little nicer if you got the room for them. Um, and uh, pH maintenance and calibration. Tell you what, okay. let me tell you. Um, uh, before we take a break, I want to tell you this segment was brought to you by Brewers Publications, publisher of Brewing Element Series, a four-part set exploring the fundamental ingredients in beer, water, malt, hops, and yeast. Each book offers detailed scientific examination, practical instruction, and recipes for both home brewers and craft brewers. Find the Brewing Element Series at brewerspublications.com. All right, we'll take a short break. When we come back, uh, we'll talk about calibrating and cleaning your and storing your, your pH probe right after this. Are you looking for a simple brewing system that's great for all grain brewing, but everything on the market seems to be full of compromises? Blickman Engineering has the answer. The Blickman Brew Easy All Grain Brewing System. The Brew Easy is a complete system with easy upgrades and a beautiful compact design, perfect for any size brewing location. At its core, the Brew Easy is built on two gorgeous Blickman Boilermaker brew kettles, a high temperature March pump, and either a top tier gas burner or the new boil coil electric heater. The Brew Easy adapter lid allows the pots to stack on top of each other, forming an efficient, strong, and compact brewing setup that comes in 5, 10, and 20-gallon batch sizes. Upgrade your Brew Easy system with full automated control by adding a Blickman Tower of Power temp controller and make moving around easy with the Blickman Kettle Cart. The Brew Easy is modular. If you already own a Boilermaker kettle, you can build your Brew Easy by purchasing just the modules you need. The new Brew Easy all-grain brewing system. See it today at BlickmanEngineering.com and brew with Blickman quality on your new Brew Easy. Easy. Like the Lance Armstrong of the beer world. Except for that nut thing. This is Bruce Strong. Longtime BN homie Michael Fairbrother wants you guys to check out MoonlightMeadery.com. Moonlight Meadery, mead for any occasion. Moonlight Meads are the reference standards for mead categories in the BJCP style guidelines. And right now you can save 10% on two or more bottles using BN Army at MoonlightMeadery.com slash shop. Wonderful, delicious, category-defining Moonlight Mead. Check them out and let them know we sent you. Use code BN Army at checkout, MoonlightMeadery.com slash shop. All right. Um, one of the things I want to point out about pH is it's not just for uh, wort and not just for water. It's actually uh, a very important measurement in fermentation. So especially when we're doing um, bigger beers or you know, any any beers at the brewery, um, one of the th- measurements I want taken every day is pH. So we take specific gravity and we take pH. And one of the reasons you want to do that is because uh, like specific gravity, pH will follow a, a, a specific curve uh, during fermentation. And if you see variances in that uh, in your brew, you know something's wrong. Like if you see the pH is dropping like it should, there's a problem. If the pH is dropping rapid, more rapidly than normal, there's a problem. If the pH starts rising all of a sudden, there's a problem. All these are, are potential indicators of a yeast problem or an infection or many other things. So in your brewery, you should be measuring uh, the pH, especially, you know, beers that you're brewing uh, commercially, you know, every, every week or every couple of weeks, I'm brewing IPA. That IPA, important to check it. And Hopefully, it tells you everything's 
fine. And you feel like it's a wasted measurement. But I'm telling you, there will be come a time when all of a sudden something's wrong. And that's going to be your first year. It's just your canary in the coal mine. And uh, you will see that before you taste it. Yeah, so, I agree. Um, well, well worth, uh, uh, you know, measuring pH in, in fermentation as well. All right. So um, talk to me, uh, John, about uh, Palmer, about uh, calibrating your pH, uh, okay. your pH meter. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I talk about this a lot in my water classes. And pH is the measurement of hydrogen ions in solution, their concentration, their activity. Um, and a pH meter works, the electrode works, by measuring electrical potential across a small semipermeable membrane, generally. And um, when you're, what you're doing when you calibrate a pH meter is you're, you're calibrating the voltage difference across that finite distance. Over time, as you use the meter, and especially in wort, um, you get these proteins, you get your ions, you know, your water ions, the calcium, magnesium, etc., that migrate into the semipermeable, mem- or semipermeable membrane, and that finite distance across that electrode decreases. So as you use the pH meter over time, um, it becomes harder and harder to calibrate because that distance is getting smaller. And that's when you need to eventually change the electrode is when that, you know, electrode essentially gets contaminated like that. Um, fortunately, today, you know, like, like we are saying, electrodes are replaceable. Um, calibration is much more, much easier. You can buy pre-made solutions that are, you know, calibration solutions that are very accurate. pH 4, pH 7. The little um, packets are quite nice. They yeah. have little foil packets, little four, seven, ten. You only need two points. You need seven, and you can pick either four or ten, depending on what type of liquid you're you're measuring. If you tend to measure below seven uh, solutions, then you calibrate to four and seven. If you tend to measure higher uh, pH solutions, uh, then you pick the seven to ten. And they have right. these little packets, and they, they stay sealed so they're nice and fresh versus the bottles, which uh, when you open them, expose them to air and over time and light and things like that, uh, kind of wears them out. Yeah. But they're, you know, they're, they're pretty accurate. They're most accurate at room temperature. So what you're doing when you calibrate is you're calibrating that meter at room temperature. Now, today's pH meters have a function called ATC, Automatic Temperature Compensation. Um, the purpose of that is to keep the electrode in the pH meter calibrated at different temperatures than your calibration temperature. So um, you calibrate the meter, it's calibrated at room temperature, and now you measure a sample that's at, say, 100 degrees Fahrenheit instead of 70 degrees Fahrenheit. That ATC function keeps the meter calibrated at that different temperature. It doesn't do anything to compensate for the actual change of pH of your solution um, at 70 versus 100 versus, you know, whatever temperature it may be at. Mm -hmm. And so that's why when we talk about wort and beer pH uh, measurement, we always encourage cooling the sample to near room temperature before measuring it. There's because about that a, way you reduce that error. There's about a 0.3 difference between mash temp and room temp on, on pH. Right. As you go higher in temperature, you increase the chemical, chemical activity, dissociation, and that pH usually reads lower at higher temperature than it does at room. Mm-hmm. Well, and um, also there some of the uh, the benchtop meters and some of the handheld meters actually have a a, um, a jack for a thermometer probe so that you can actually put a thermometer in your solution uh, or you know a probe that'll read temperature as yeah well that's as part of that pH. ATC function mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, okay now uh, what about uh, cleaning and storage then you get this this proteinaceous uh, buildup on the on your on your probe and uh, you know you want to clean that off and then uh, uh, cleaning and storage yeah um 
rinsing with uh, distilled water uh, is good after you've used uh, the meter in wort to help you rinse off the protein. Um, but you really don't want to store the probe and di- distilled water, I understand. Um, I guess for whatever right. reason, it's a little bit harsh. Um, generally, they recommend storing it in the buffered solutions, either right. the four or seven. Well, um, yeah, you can store it in the seven. They also have uh, designed storage solutions available, um, which, uh, you know, a lot of times they'll say just store in seven. Uh, but, um, you yeah, know, you can use the uh, the solutions. The important thing is not to let it dry out. Yes. Uh, because, and you know, if you get it's going to be a long time between you use it and you have one of those things with a, like a cup on the end of a, um, and, and that dries out, you're going to ruin your probe. Um, so you can rehydrate them. You can put them, you know, the, the solution back in there and, and hopefully, you know, it can recover. But if you let that little element dry out, you're going to mess it up. Yeah, very true. Very true. And they have the other some- important thing is each manufacturer is going to recommend different things. Mm-hmm. And the important thing is to follow what their recommendations are for storage solutions. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, because, uh, you know, and it depends on mainly on the probe. And so if you replace your probe, whatever that manufacturer says for that probe, that's that's the way to go. Um, and they have cleaning solutions that you can use as well. Um you know any buildup on there, and it goes without saying. Don't don't tap the uh, the uh, electrode on on something. Don't uh, leave it out uh, during the brew day. Always return it to storage solution. Don't leave it out sitting there on your on your your brew bench uh, for an entire brew day. You want to keep that thing wet, or put it back in one of the calibration solutions while it's while you're not using it. Uh, don't bang it on the desk to clean it. Right. Right. Uh, treat it like you would, um, you know, your your favorite uh, uh, favorite toy. I'll say. <laughs> Put it that way. <laughs> oh, see, you knew what I was going to say, right? Um, all right. Um, well, I think that's a, a good cover of uh, both weight and pH measurements. Yep. Anything? Anything to add to that? Any any recap before we go? Oh. I. Yeah, I can't do anything. I mean, um, I will throw in the the caveat that uh, you can have the same water pH measurement for two completely different waters. Mm-hmm. So, um, right, always important to understand exactly what minerals are in your water and their and their concentrations besides mm-hmm. just pH. Right, sure. All right, uh, good show. Uh, stay tuned if you're listening live because we're going to have another show where we talk about dissolved oxygen, specific gravity, pressure, and maybe something about length. I think I think we I think we can wrap up measurements in the next show, or or maybe there's ten more shows here. I don't know, uh, but stay tuned if you're listening. We'll all find out. If you enjoy, if you enjoy the show, if you enjoy uh, getting this for free, you should check out our fine sponsors. Check out BlickmanEngineering.com. Uh, check out all the cool things they have there. Check out uh, White Labs. We've got uh, Brewers Publications, Grog Tag, Moonlight Meadery. All those folks are helping pay for this show, so you don't have to. And uh, the least you could do is check out. Uh, what they offer check out their websites and uh if you run into them uh give them a thanks uh for supporting uh stuff like this so uh, you get a a, a free education about uh, all this brewing technology check out the brewing network store brewingnetwork.com slash store all sorts of goodies in there and when you buy those things every dollar goes directly to the bottom line of the brewing network and helps keep all the shows on the air so uh your support greatly appreciated until then everybody brew strong brew strong everyone brew. 